I had this fear of hunger. I was scared of being hungry. I didn't want to be hungry. For more than a year, Bongani Zikalala lived on the streets of Johannesburg's inner city. I had that hope in the first week, like, no, I'm going to make it, and I kept on wondering about. And then on the second week, that's when my money was finished, the little pocket money that I, I took from home. Bongani did what he could to survive, and when life is all about survival, danger is just a heartbeat away. But this was not the beginning of Bongani's story. It began instead 400 kilometers southwest of Johannesburg, in a small town called Mayflower, where he lived with his mom and two sisters. My father was not there. My father was working and he would come maybe once a month and then go back to work again. So I ended up grabbing what, what everyone was saying, what all my friends were saying. I ended up grabbing it and believing in it and making it my own because there was no one who was older than me, like a role model at home. Bongani also turned to television for direction. Having a television at, at, at home, and seeing these people in this world, in this fantasy world, that is how the, the, the desire for acting started like taking shape. Along with his love for television and acting, Bongani also developed a love for reading. As a boy at a time, I was, I was reading a whole lot of the, of the Old Testament. I, I started developing this desire to be used by God, me to be a leader, to look at the world with, in a different eye, in an eye of serving. Bongani knew for this to happen, he needed to further his education. But when his application for financial assistance was turned down, he felt trapped in the world he was born into. And I realized that in order for me to bring that change, I had to make a move. Bongani had a friend in Johannesburg and a place to stay, but it ended up being a tin shack far from the city. After living there for two months and working a few odd jobs to make a living, he had had enough. He told his friend he was moving to Hillbrow, Johannesburg's inner city. Three weeks later, Bongani was still living on the streets. His food supply came from what others had thrown away. And with every passing day, the dream of that perfect world that drew him to the city was dashed. I started realizing that I'm dead, I'm doomed, and I need to go back home. And there was no way of going back home because I had no money to go back home. And I had to live with this misery now. And that's when the depression started happening. That's when my desire for God and my love for God started dying, slowly dying. The long days on the streets became cold, restless nights. Bongani did what he could to find shelter. He also started smoking marijuana to help cope with the stress he was experiencing on the streets. But when reality returned the next morning, he was always left with the same question. It made me to start ask God questions like, okay, Lord, am I living? And in order for me to live, what should I do? Can you help me? Then one day after attending a poetry reading workshop in town, Bongani met an actor who worked at a local advertising company. When he heard Bongani's story and saw his passion for the arts, he got him an interview with the same company. Bongani got the job and was given a year contract. With the money he started earning, he was able to rent a small apartment in the city. He also started partying away the weekends with some new friends. When I got that first check, I was introduced to this world of fun that I used to see on TV. I started believing in myself that I could do anything I want. But the following year, his contract wasn't renewed. When my contract ended with the advertising company and reality sort of came back to me. With no stable income, he couldn't pay his rent. Eventually, his landlord rented his room out to someone else and kicked him out. Bongani was back on the streets, back into a world he thought he had left behind, back into a world where every day was a battle for survival. And although survival was paramount, he knew this time on the streets needed to be different. He escaped to quieter places in the city, places where he could think and pray. That's when I realized that, okay, Lord, you must be in control, because I've tried everything and nothing works. A few days later, Bongani was in the same park doing some exercises to keep warm. But there was someone else in the park that day, someone who had been praying for an opportunity to be a blessing. His name was David. So he was telling me about Jesus and how he overcame suffering and how, how, how that suffering can be actually used by God to build your character. He started encouraging me with the words from the New Testament. David invited Bongani to his home-based Bible study and introduced him to his friends. 
I think we had a real yearning in our hearts to disciple someone properly, you know, and I guess that's what you do in a home group. You disciple people, you have friendships, and I don't see him as, you know, someone I disciple, I see him as a friend, you know. As Bongani became a regular member of the Bible study, he started maturing in his faith. During the day, I will pray in the morning that, Lord, use this day to change me, to, pray, to, to let your will be done. And one day I was walking out of the park and then I saw money. And it was 20, 20 notes on the ground. I took it and I prayed to God and I asked God, Lord, what do you want me to do with this money? And so like I thought of creating a CV, writing down a CV. And then the following day I applied for a job at, 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 at different stores. Bungani got a job as a stock taker for a local grocery store and started getting back on his feet. He also found a new place to stay. Everything has a purpose. Nothing is an accident with God. David and his wife recently left South Africa to attend Bible college in the United States. And Bungani remembers the hours, days, and sometimes weeks he spent with them when struggles with work and finance took their toll on his personal life. God is there and he is in control and he's working everything for, for the good of all those who believe in him. 